dedicated to the strength of the nation. Proudly, we hail. Yes, proudly we hail, starring Richard Denning in The Common Touch, a United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. And now here is our producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you very much, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your theater of stars. For those famous names of the silver screen, join us in plays we know you'll enjoy. Our star is Richard Denning, and the title of our story, The Common Touch. We'll have the curtain for Act One in a moment, but first, here is your announcer with this message. Young men and women, here's your opportunity for an important new career in aviation. Today's best deal for the aviation beginner is in the United States Air Force. No experience is needed, and you earn good pay while you learn. The Air Force will give you the best aviation technical training, opportunity for steady advancement, security and good retirement benefits. If you're 18 to 34, 17 with parents' consent, find out today how you can begin this important new career. Get full details at your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. Now, once again, our producer. The curtain rises on Act One of The Common Touch, starring Richard Denning as Dr. Christopher Hazard. Tucked away in a very small corner of Pennsylvania Susquehanna, like a thimble in a sewing box, was the tiny village of Groton. It was a village that stirred nostalgic thoughts somehow of half-forgotten things, of an apple eaten beneath a tree, a glass of cool spring water, of flowers in an old brown jug, and winds murmuring of an old Dutch legend. At such a place in Come Up Lane, a shingle swung and crooned to itself on rusted hinges and pronounced in faded letters that within the weatherboard cottage one might find Dr. Christopher Hazard, dealer in colics and pains, abrasions and contusions. Uh, Doc Hazard, if you're thinking to move the Queen, Doc, you can't do it without putting yourself in check. Hmm, let me see. Aye, and sitting there with your chin in your hands won't bring about a miracle. As the saying goes, Doc, you're in a bad spot. I recollect having seen much worse spots, Angus. Now, now you take measles, for example, or smallpox. Those spots are known, Angus, as the rash of variola and have three stages, propomal, vestibular, and pustular. Aye, uh, are you playing chess, Doc, or... Teaching me the profession. Uh, playing chess, to be sure, Angus. But you mentioned bad spots. So, I'll move my knight here, which levels you like the trumpets did the walls of Jericho. Checkmate, my friend. Oh, that was a dirty, <laughs> underhanded trick, Dr. Hazard. Or my name isn't Angus McLean. <laughs> yeah, you've been dodging around the board like a bird with a broken wing, and I thought I had you. All your gibberish about spots... Ah, well, the next game will be different. <laughs> well, I should pop over to see Janie Gibson, Angus. I told her I would after tea. Oh, that's it. Run away with my 25 cents. Oh, you're a canny man, Doc. Oh, I should <laughs> think your shameful defeat would be sufficient for one night, Angus. I'll have you know there's no man nor beast can beat the Scots. You've no doubt heard the story of Robert the Bruce? Oh, yes, I, I do recall something about him. Uh, a Scot, wasn't he? Hey, Doc, I'm disgusted at oh, you. Oh, yes, sure. I remember a Scot indeed. He was uh, once in a cave like you're now in a hole, and a spider saved his life. Aye. <laughs> Will you fetch my coat, Angus? And if anyone calls, I'll be back in an hour. Aye. Oh, and Angus. Aye. I noticed a spider in the rose hedge this morning, a Aye. big fat one. You might go ask him what he knows about chess. <laughs> oh, Doc, I, I'm awful scared. I am. I, I, I've never been so scared in my life. Scared of what, Janie? Of becoming a mother? Oh, I, I've never been one before. 
Lord. Oh, Janie. Janie, you're a silly little goose. There's, there's not a thing in the world to be afraid of. And you're right as rain. Now, look at it this way, Janie. It's a miracle. The oldest and the newest one in the world. Babies have been born since the beginning of time. Millions of them. Every second of the day. Your own mother had seven of them, Janie. Of which you were one. Well, I know, Doc, but... But what? Oh, I don't know. Of course you don't, but I do. Now, now, you just dry your tears. That's it. And, and think about the day when he takes his first step and maybe falls down and bumps his head and you'll have to kiss it better. Or maybe that wonderful tug in your heart when he says, Mama, for the first time. Why, gracious, Jenny, he'll be in school before you know it, coming home with skin, knees, and a black eye. Oh, go on with you, Doc. How do you know it's going to be a he? I don't know rightly, but wasn't that the order? Timothy Gibson the second. <laughs> it's got a nice ring to it, Janie. Sounds exactly like a United States president. <laughs> oh, say, say, oh, you see. <laughs> You're a caution. <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes two of us. Now, you snuggle down and get 40 winks. Well, you know, with all this fuss, you'll have Timothy having the baby instead of you. And then I'd have to send clear to Philadelphia for a specialist. I wouldn't know what to do. Mrs. Wimble, I'll be blessed if I know how you do it. <laughs> how I do what, Dr. Hazard? How you manage to keep looking so wonderfully young. Oh. <laughs> Why, a person would swear you weren't a day over 35. They'd never dream you were in your early 40s. Oh, Phil Sticks. You know, I'll be 58 come July. No. Yeah. Bless me if it ain't the truth. I wouldn't be giving my age away if you wasn't no doctor. Mm. <laughs> a girl has to keep her secrets, you know that. Well, I wouldn't have believed it, Mrs. Wimble. And what brings you to my surgery? Oh, say, doctor, it's my headaches again. You know, I feel something dreadful. Oh. Yeah. And I think my liver's kicking up, too. I do. I really do. I get that short of breath, and, you know, my leg swells up, and mm. well, I sort of get the blind staggers. Well, you've got enough complaints to stock a hospital, Mrs. Wimble. Oh, I'm a sick woman, Dr. Hazard. You know, I'm down to 212 pounds. Ain't that awful? Oh. Yeah. Maybe I ought to take something, huh? Yes, yeah. yes, I, I think you should. I'll send Angus over in the morning with some pills. Oh, oh my. Oh, what kind of pills, Dr. Hazard? Oh, something very special. Uh, but there's only one thing, Mrs. Wimble. Oh, what's that? A Dutch ale. Oh. Uh, do you uh, drink much Dutch ale, Mrs. Wimble? <laughs> well, I, you know, it has me a sip once in a while. I, mm. You know how it is. <laughs> oh, well, these, uh, these pills I'm sending you, they wouldn't mix with Dutch ale. No? <laughs> well, uh, say, what happens? Oh, any amount of dreadful things. Oh, my goodness. Yes, but, but then you have nothing to worry about if you don't take any. Well, good night, Mrs. Wimble. Angus will be over the first thing in the morning. <laughs> Are you quite sure you've not gone daft? Well, only reasonably sure, Angus. Why? First, the bees are swarming with the queen thinking to lead them the Lord knows where. Old Patience hasn't had his oats, and you're sending me to Mrs. Wimble with sugar pills. Blood pressure, Angus. Oh, blood pressure be hanged. Why, Doc, are you so dead set on that bilious Mrs. Wimble chewing on sugar pills that you let the house fall apart to see that she gets them? Why? Because they might do her some good, Angus. You wouldn't believe the symptoms she's got. Headaches, upset liver, short breath, loss of weight, no appetite. What? No appetite? Now I know you've gone down. <laughs> well, maybe. She's no more sick than I am, and I'm very well indeed. But granting she's as sick as a goat, what good could sugar pills do? Mrs. Wemble isn't sick, Angus. She drinks too much Dutch ale. You see, she's lonesome since her husband died, and she's sorry for herself. Well, I can't see what... An imposing array of symptoms, Angus. And if a few sugar pills and a few kind words from me will make her feel any better, then I'm, I'm as glad as I would be if she recovered from bubonic plague. And anyway, her consumption of Dutch ale will drop, I think, a little. You see, Angus, a doctor only deals with cause and effect. And the cause doesn't have to be a germ or the effect of fever. Sometimes the cause is up here in the mind. And the effect... Uh, telephone, Doc. Telephone. Oh, something's always spoiling my lectures just when I get going, too. Hello? Uh, yes, Dr. Hazard. Yeah. Where? 
All right. I'll be there immediately. And don't try to move him. Right. Angus. Hi, Doc. There's been a bad car smash on Bower Road. Get a harness on old patients while I pack my kit. Mrs. Wimble's sugar pills will have to wait. I'm a doctor, miss. Are you all right? Yes, I think so, but is he... He's not dead? No, no, he's not. Uh, Mrs. Proctor. Yes, doctor. Would you be good enough to invite this young lady to your house for a cup of tea? Uh, we'll have to get this man to surgery. I'm not going to leave my father. Now, please, please, you can't help here, and you might be a hindrance. Now, come along, my dear. I'll fix you a nice cup of hot tea. That's a good girl. Simpson, make a bed in your cart. All the hay and quilts you can manage. Angus, you help him. Hey, Doc, is he hurt bad? Fractured skull, I think. Maybe smashed up inside. Uh, come on, Angus. Move, man. Move. Hey, Doc, on the double pool, Mrs. Wimple and her sugar pills. We pause briefly from our story, The Common Touch, starring Richard Denning to bring you an important message from our government. High school graduates, for a job with a real future, get into aviation now. United States Air Force offers you unlimited career opportunities. Under the new Airman Career Program, you'll be trained in the job for which you are best suited and have the best chance for success. You'll get good pay right from the start, free room and board, free clothing and equipment, free medical and dental care, free retirement plans. This is your big opportunity. Look into it today. Get full details at your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. The curtain rises on Act Two of The Common Touch, starring Richard Denning as Dr. Christopher Hazard. Not since, perhaps, the signing of the Declaration has the tiny Susquehanna village of Groton suffered a shattering of its drowsing peace as on the day of the car smash in the Bower Road. On that cardinal day, the eyes and the ears of Groton were focused on the weathered board cottage over which a shingle swung and crooned to itself, shamefully callous to the tense excitement. Within the cottage, on the examining table of Dr. Hazard, a man lay quietly on the edge of the black pool. Beyond the surgeon's door in the sitting room, a girl waited. Doctor, how is my father? He's worse? No, no, he's no worse at the moment. However, I find it necessary to be quite frank, Miss... Uh, I don't think I know your name. Craig, Althea Craig. My father's Mr. Denham Craig of Philadelphia. Miss Craig, your father's condition is extremely serious. To, to be very blunt, his hold on life at the moment is rather precarious. What is it? Basal skull fracture. Depressed. Which means that part of his skull is causing pressure on the brain. What are you going to do? The only thing I can do, Miss Craig, operate at once. Operate? You? How could you operate on my father? You're only up a... A village bumpkin doctor, I know. But you see, Miss Craig, there's little choice in the matter. Send for a specialist. Send to Philadelphia. Get my father to a hospital. The nearest hospital is Paisley, and your father can't be moved. I would gladly send for a specialist, Miss Craig, if there was time, but there isn't. This is an unfortunate case of your father living or dying by the grace of God and what little I know. I'll require your permission. Very well, Dr. Hazard. Even though I don't believe you know what you're doing. However, if what you say is true... And if my father dies, you'll have killed him. Shall we let accusations wait for a cause, Miss Craig? Angus. Angus. Hi, Doc. Where are you wanting me? Yes. And I want every pot and pan in the house full of boiling water. And I mean boiling, Angus. Hi, Doc. And then whistle over and bring Miss Wimble back here. Sponge, Mrs. Wimble. Miss Wimble, are you all right? <laughs> A little faster then, please. Hmm? That's right. Now, a small clamp. No, no, a small one from the side of the tray. 
Slow up the ether, Angus. It mm. should drip, not pour. Mm -hmm. Can you wipe my forehead with a sponge, Mrs. Wemble? Yes. Thank you. Now give me the elevator. That gadget. Fine. Easy, Angus. Easy. Mm. Easy does it. Mm. Dr. Hazard. Well? I'm not sure, of course, Miss Craig. But I think we can see the edge of the woods. Oh. Oh, God bless you, Dr. Hazard. That's right. That's right, Miss Craig. <laughs> Cry it out. I've never been so frightened in my life. Hmm. I had a couple of frights myself. What with Angus trying to drown your father in ether, and Mrs. Wimble near fainting on me every two minutes. When can I see him? When he's awake. Tomorrow, perhaps. We've put him to bed in the surgery for the time being. Oh, uh, you'll stay here, of course, Miss Craig. Oh, no, I couldn't do that, Dr. Hazard. I'll go to the inn. Oh, Groton's inn burned to the ground about uh, the time of Benjamin Franklin. We've never gotten around to rebuilding it. But I, I think you'll find it comfortable here, Miss Craig. Mrs. Wimble's staying on for a few weeks. A few weeks? Well, I'm afraid your father won't do much navigating in the very near future. Now, what do you say to a pot of coffee? And about a million raised biscuits. I'm practically starved. Christopher. Now, uh, I thought we agreed to amputate the tougher and make it just Chris. All right, then, Chris. Much better. We'll be leaving tomorrow. Yes. I've been trying to think of some way to say thank you. But there aren't any words. The past four weeks of, of just knowing you is more than sufficient thanks, Althea. You know, I've grown very fond of you. Have you, Chris? That's strange. Why? Because we seem to have so very much in common. You see, Chris, I've grown very fond of you, too. Do you mind if I ask how fond, Althea? No, I don't mind... I think the Greeks had a word for it. They called it love. Do you really mean that? Of course I do, silly, or I wouldn't have said it. Uh, life does become involved, doesn't it? Why, Chris? Because I happen to love you too, Althea. Inconsistent little beggar, that Dan Cupid. Inconsistent? Country bumpkin falls in love with lovely, wealthy Philadelphia debutante. You, way up there... Me way down here. Oh, don't say that, Chris. It's not true. I'm afraid it's quite obvious. Chris, it doesn't matter where you are or where I am. All roads lead to Rome. And I'm going to Rome. Oh, Chris, please come with me. Chris, you not only have my permission to marry Althea... But my sincere parental blessing. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Craig. Oh, no, thank you very much. You see, Chris, a short while ago, you saved my life. And it's a privilege to give you part of it as a brief payment. I'm very pleased, Chris. And I think you'll both be very happy. You should do well in Philadelphia, my boy. Philadelphia, sir? Of course. You surely don't intend to remain here. Why, well, I couldn't leave here, Mr. Craig. But there's Althea to consider. Althea? She's not accustomed to a small village, Chris. A weatherboard cottage. Oh, there's nothing wrong with it. But Althea's always been used to nice things. Feminine frills and, uh, and society. Her own circle of friends. I couldn't open a Philadelphia practice if I wanted to, Mr. Craig. Money? <laughs> I'm making you kids a paltry wedding gift, Chris. $10,000. And I believe that money should work. I can think of no greater work than yours. Chris, for her sake, as well as mine, and your own. And the people that really need you. Think it over. Give it a try. Chris, darling, you look perfectly scrumptious. Turn around so I can see you better. Althea, I feel like a blasted nincompoop. Frock coat, striped pants. They make you look older, my sweet, and more professional. Professional? Oh, 
dearest, I'm only Christopher Hazard, M.D., and all this falter all in scenery won't add or detract from what I know. My patients in Groton didn't care whether I wore overalls or a Hindu turban. I know it, Chris, but the rest of the world doesn't. And success depends upon a front window for display. Now, kiss me and run along to your office. And don't forget the Valence party tonight. Everybody who is anybody will be there. And maybe they'll all adopt my charming husband for their doctor. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Uh, Mrs. Crofton, may I present my husband, Dr. Hazard? Well, how do you do, my dear doctor? I've heard so much about you. <laughs> In fact, I've been thinking of coming to see you. Oh, I've been feeling so dreadful lately, the most beastly headaches. And I wonder if, well, if perhaps my liver isn't a bit out of tune. One's does, doesn't one? <laughs> do you suppose it could be anything serious, doctor? I haven't the faintest idea, Mrs. Crofton. And I'm sure neither the time nor the place is fitting for a consultation. If you'll make an appointment with my nurse, I'll be glad to give you professional advice, not social chit-chat. Oh, of course, Dr. Hazard. Please forgive me. Doctor? Chris, how could you? Mrs. Crofton's one of the wealthiest women in Philadelphia. I don't care if she's got three heads, hypochondriac. Oh, Althea, I've got to get out of here. I can't stand it. You stay and come home later. I'll take a cab. Oh, no, darling. I'm rather bored, too. If you're ready, I'll go with you. Bertram, has the doctor come down for breakfast yet? Uh, Dr. Hazard left quite early this morning, madam. Early this morning? Did he have a call? Uh, no, madam. He, he left this letter for you. Letter? Well, thank you, Bertram. Yes, madam. Dear Althea, a wise man once said, you can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. And by the same token, neither can I become something which I'm not. I'm still a village pumpkin, and my place is still among the wimbles and crowleys of Groton. The people need me as I need them. I'm writing this to spare you the anguish of... of goodbyes. Oh, Chris. We knew you'd be back, Doc. Uh, I, I put a new coat of paint on the shingles. And now, uh, this is a secret, but the villagers are going to have a party for you. Uh, oh, Doc, it's good to be playing chess with you again. Mm. Oh, yes, thanks, Angus. But I, I must say, Doc, you're out of practice. Yes, yes, indeed I am. And look at that board, will you? You're in a trap, and you've lost your queen. <laughs> mm. Oh, boy, a patient. Just when I had your beat. Uh, shall I see who it is, Doc? Uh, no, thanks, Angus. I'll go. Good evening, Dr. Hazard. Althea. It must be after hours, Doctor, but I'm suffering a dreadful pain right here in my heart. Do you know of any cure for it? Althea, darling, what are you doing here? I've come to join my husband. You see, he's the village doctor here. And... But... Shh. Not now. A wise man once said, if you can walk with kings and not lose the common touch. I lost it, Chris. And I'm ever so grateful to you for finding it and giving it back. Oh, darling. Angus. Angus. Hey, Doc, what are you wanting me? Just wanted to tell you, Angus, don't disturb the chessboard. We'll finish the game in the morning. I've just regained my queen. The curtain falls in the final act of The Common Touch. Our star, Richard Denning, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. High school graduates, there's an important place for you in the U.S. Air Force. You can continue your education, learn a trade, get ahead, and at the same time earn good pay. The United States Air Force has openings for specialists in air transport, aircraft maintenance, research, clerical administration, radio, and many other fields. 
The Air Force will train you for one of these responsible jobs. Two kinds of training are open to you. You can learn on the job under the world's most skilled experts, or if you qualify, you can go to the finest Air Force technical schools as vacancies exist. You'll find interesting work, job security, good retirement benefits, and opportunity for travel. This is your big opportunity. Look into it today. Get full details at your nearest Air Force base or United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. Now, once again at the microphone, our star and our producer. Dick, we've had the pleasure of working with your lovely wife, Evelyn Ankers, and now with you here, this makes it unanimous. Well, you certainly make a person feel at home, C.P. Now I know why Evelyn keeps talking about you and your studio. <laughs> well, tell her I hope she'll join us again soon. And by the way, I heard your radio show, My Favorite Husband, last Friday. You and Lucille Ball have a fine program. Well, thank you, C.P. How about to have you any time left for pictures? Oh, sure. As a matter of fact, I just finished The Lie at Paramount with Barbara Stanwyck and John Lund. Oh, yes. I believe it's scheduled for release after the first of the year. Yes. Uh, tell me, how's that new Brentwood home of yours coming along? Oh, fine. Of course, uh, everything had to wait in the house until I got my hobby shop built. <laughs> I'll bet Evelyn keeps you busy making lamps, valances, and all the things a wife needs around the house. <laughs> oh, she keeps me plenty busy, and so does Dee Dee. Diana Dee. She's so cute. How old is she now? Five and going to school. Wonderful. Tell me, does she still ride around in that red chariot seat on the front of your bicycle? Yes, but I'm taking the level stretches now. No hills. <laughs> Say, C.P., why don't you and uh, the wife come on out and see our place? We will. Uh, maybe we can pick up some good ideas from your hobby shop. Fine. We'll be looking for you and Mildred. Now tell me, what's doing here with you next week? Our star next week, Dick, and ladies and gentlemen, will be lovely Barbara Britton. And the title of our Christmas story, My Son is a Wise Man. Good. We'll be listening. So long, C.P. Goodbye, Dick. Be sure to join us next week, ladies and gentlemen, when Barbara Britton joins us in our Christmas story, My Son is a Wise Man. Until then, thanks for listening, and cheerio from Hollywood. <laughs> Richard Danning appears with the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. The script was by Kimball S. Sant, with the music of Eddie Dunstetter. This program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking. <laughs>